Anyway, in a different part of the world, at COP28 to be precise, French President Emmanuel Ma Macron... I don't know what I was about to say there, macaroni but I think it was going to yeah. be macaroon because I really like him. <laughs> but he's urged Australia to lift our very embarrassing ban on nuclear power. We know at COP28 they've agreed to do their utmost. 20 countries, not Australia, obviously, have agreed to do their utmost to triple the amount of nuclear power that is being generated and used by 20. 50. It's a huge undertaking, but finally, one that we actually hope they make. Here was Emmanuel Macron. I hope that you will, you will manage to lift the ban. I mean, nuclear energy is a source of necessity to uh, succeed. Yes. For carbon neutrality in 2050. Nice, so, I mean, now it's with the control of international to make agency and uh, with the best possible regulation. I think this is a firm and a good decision to relaunch nuclear capacities. Couldn't agree more, President Emmanuel Macron. But of course, here's our federal treasurer just today, Jim Chalmers, shooting it down, because we all know where this government stands on nuclear energy. Uh, nuclear energy doesn't make sense for Australia. It doesn't make economic sense. And even if it did, it would take too long. Uh, we have remarkable advantages here, uh, geological, geographical, meteorological, uh, and we need to maximise those advantages. That means getting more renewable energy into the system. Notice they never explain that. Oh, it's too expensive. It's unaccessible. They can literally make these things, chuck them on a barge, and they'll arrive in days. Now, obviously, plugging it into the grid is another thing. And there's no doubt there's some upfront costs involved. But as you've said countless times, Caleb, if you just lifted the moratorium and talked to the energy agencies, the energy providers, like, what would you do if we did lift the moratorium? Have you asked small business about this? Who were you talking to about? this. No, all you're doing is pushing your own agenda. It actually blows one's mind because mm. they can't even lean on public opinion anymore. These guys yeah. do not care about public opinion. They know that actually if we ran some cohesive polls, and there was some done some months ago, which showed that nuclear energy wasn't on the nose when it comes mm. to public opinion. So they can't lean on that anymore. All they've got is this dogged approach. But they don't seek consensus, just like this digital ID bill that they've now got up. Who wanted this? Who voted for this? And then you have significant cohorts just saying, if you just let us at it, yeah. we would yeah. make nuclear energy in Australia work. We've already got the world's largest uranium deposits. Just give it a go. Nope, not happening, doesn't suit our agenda. And there's Macron, just lastly, saying, oh, you know, Australia's stance... Please don't tar us with that brush. It's not Australia's <laughs> stance. It's the Federal Labor Party's stance, who unfortunately is our government at the moment. But it's not Australia's stance at all. Well, the government's opposition to nuclear energy is entirely ideological. And the proof of that is they won't even entertain a mm. conversation. Yeah. They won't put it out to the free market. Meanwhile, their pursuit of renewables is entirely illogical. We've got to build, what is it, 22,000 solar panels every day for the next eight years or something, we're not even close to achieving that. And the world is now saying you will not achieve net zero without nuclear mm. power. And yet Chris Bowen not only refuses to have the conversation, he belittles nuclear energy. Have a listen to this, where uh, Chris Bowen was asked about the possibility of nuclear power. It's a unicorn and a fantasy, and somebody has to pay for it if they are really serious about this plan. When you put the most expensive form of energy into the system, there is a massive cost to be paid. So the whole world is talking about tripling nuclear power while the Australian energy minister is calling it a unicorn. Chris Bowen will never transition Australia from fossil fuels to renewables. Caleb, the one transition he will be successful in is transitioning the Albanese government into the Dutton government. I thought, I thought you were going to say, say gender, gender transition. Because then that, no, no, that no, would... How come that. we were both on because, that? Because that would then at least mean that, like, if his job as the minister was on the line because he's been so bad at it, he could come back and say, yeah, but quotas, quotas, I'm a woman now. Brand. But, but as Liz alluded to earlier, I mean, I've been banging on for years when it comes to nuclear energy 
just lift the ban and let the market decide. Because if you are so confident in this statement you keep making that it is not economically viable, then it will never be built in this country. Mm. There is no need for that law to be there to ban it. And to date, no one can yet answer the question as to why that ban has to remain if their concern is simply that it's not economically viable. Now, we know the truth. It's not about whether it's economically viable or not. It's about two things. Mm. Shoring up support of the Greens, because the Greens would go spare, because yep. they reckon that, you know, everyone's going to grow three heads, uh, you know, look like they're Tasmanian or something, if we bring in uh, a nuclear energy. The other thing is that they're dead worried that it will show up that the, the decade and a half of money that we have poured into renewable energy waste. will have been a waste and for nothing. And yeah. it's just uh, come back to me now. Well, months ago, we were talking about the energy minister up in Queensland, right, mm. who talked to some conference about renewable energy. And he was, like, literally saying to these people, nuclear energy <laughs> would be a moratorium on your industry. I mean, That's they're right. just openly right. admitting That's it. That's what we want. Saying, saying that if we had nuclear energy, renewables would be in trouble. Well, isn't that all the proof we need that we need nuclear energy? I mean, we're yeah. the only country in the top yeah. 20 energy consumers in the world that doesn't have it, and we just doggedly refuse to entertain it. We will end up the laughing stock of the world. We'll end up with we the world's are. most expensive electricity, the world's most unreliable electricity, and the joke is we're sitting on massive deposits of uranium. Oh, we'll ship it to everybody else, that's fine. You benefit and be prosperous <laughs> thanks to our uranium. Can't do a thing with it here, though. Absolutely not. And as we've already said, to anyone who is concerned about the presence of nuclear in Australia, we already have it here. It's in every hospital <clears throat> in the country for crying out loud. How do you think these things work? It just doesn't make sense. And all we ever get from this government is more of what Chalmers said, mm. more of what Bowen just said. Yeah. They don't speak to facts and figures yeah. to back it up. They simply say, oh, it isn't feasible, it isn't doable here, oh, it's too expensive. Really show us the proof of that because we think otherwise yeah. and we have got the proof. I mean, we've had a nuclear reactor in Lucas Heights in Sydney since the 1950s. And if you, you heard any problem yep. about that, no, you haven't. 